What's good, everybody? In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to use the quadratic formula and when in four examples. And I'm going to give you some bonus tips to improve your accuracy when solving. Starting off this video, when do we use the quadratic formula? We use it when we cannot factor. OK, if we could factor, we're not going to use this method. So if we had a problem like this, we there's no other way but the quadratic formula to figure out what the zeros are. I'm not going to go over this example, but just understand it's for polynomials, functions that we cannot factor. All right. And this is the formula we're going to use. All right. So now that we know the formula, there's one other thing that's important. AX squared plus BX plus C, right? We just got to know which term is which. So in our first example, when we start solving, I would have X is equal to the opposite of B. So that means 64 is negative plus or minus 64 squared minus four times negative 16 times 80. And this is all divided by two times negative 16. Now, typically with these type of problems, you are going to use a calculator and you have to be good with simplifying square roots radicals, right? So now we go through X is equal to negative 64 plus or minus, and I'm going to use my calculator here, guys, just so we're, we're accurate. So 64 squared is 4,096. And we're going to add that, right? Because we have two negatives to four times 16 times 80, which is equal to 5,120. And this is all over negative 32. Now, luckily for us in this problem, this is going to turn out to be a perfect square. So we have X is equal to negative 64 plus or minus. I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm going to just add this in the calculator. All right. So let's see what we got. Plus 4096. So we're going to get 9,216 all over negative 32. Now, once we simplify this, X is equal to negative 64 plus or minus 96 over negative 32. Why is this important? And what does the plus or minus mean? Guys, we're going to have two answers, okay? So answer number one, let's get some space. X is equal to negative 64 minus 96 over 32. Once we simplify, we're going to get... All right, let's, let's do this real quick. 64 minus 96 gives me 160 all over, oops, and I forgot my negative sign here, negative 32, which is going to give us five if I'm not mistaken. Let's see, 160 divided by 32. Yep. So my first X is a positive five, right? Now we're going to go back and instead of subtracting, we're going to add 96. So let's just get some space right here. So now I go back, let's switch to blue. And we do the same thing, but instead of subtracting, we're going to add. So negative 64 plus 96 all over negative 32. Only thing that changes are the signs. So we have negative 64 plus 96. Let's see what that gives us. We're going to get positive 32 over negative 32. So we know our second X is equal to negative one. Now, the reason why a lot of students get these equations wrong is because they try to do both of these equations in one step. Just separate it and make sure you do each and every step. Let's go to problem number two. So problem number two, this is what you're more than likely going to see. We're going to have a radical that is not going to break down to a perfect square. How should we go about solving it? Well, first, let's set this up, right? So we have X is equal to negative four plus or minus four squared minus four times one times negative three all over two times one, right? So as we simplify, we have X is equal to negative four plus or minus 16 plus 12 all over two. Now we simplify some more and what we're going to get under the radical is 28. So at this step, before we split the equations, I would tell you guys, to use your calculator and figure out what is the decimal form. So when I go in, right, 
and I put 28 and I hit that square root button, this is going to give me 5.29. Now, please understand, right? This comes back to decimals and rounding. You could keep it like this, but Mr. Peters, I cannot stand decimals. So what I do is I round it to 5.3. So now that I know that, let's set up our equations. X is equal to negative 4 plus 5.3 over 2. And we have X is equal to negative 4 minus 5.3 over 2. And now we could solve, right? So let's switch back to red. So now when I do this, we're going to get, I want to say that's 1.3. Let's just make sure we have the calculator. Let's just make sure we're accurate. So we have positive 1.3 over 2. So that's going to give us x is equal to 0 0.65. And then once we go back, we have negative 9.3 over 2 when we combine the top. Let's make sure that's right. Yep, we divide by 2, and we know our other x is equal to negative 4.65, and these are our two answers. So even if you did 5.29 or you rounded to 5.3, you're still going to get a very close answer. So just make sure you round properly and you keep that round to the same. And this is what I mean. You see how we had one decimal point, now we have two? We could leave it at 0 0.65, 0 0.7, or we could leave this at 4.7 or just 4.65. So just understand that, okay, guys? Now, my third example, I'm going to show you something different and how they're going to try to trick you in solving. Moving on to problem number three, this is what they're always going to try to do, is to trick you with the equation form. So remember that quadratic function follows this, right? AX plus BX plus C. But if you look at this equation, it doesn't follow that format. So we have to manipulate the equation, meaning I'm going to have to subtract one and bring it on the left-hand side of the equation. And after I do, now I could start filling in the quadratic formula with the necessary information. So we have to go from this step to this step if we want to get this correct. Now that we have done that, let's go through now, right? So we have x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus 7 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 1, all over 2. If there's no number in front of that lead coefficient, you don't even have to put times 1. It's going to be the same 2, you know? All right, so now we go through x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus 49 plus 4 all over 2. Now we have x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus radical 53 over 2. So now this is the most important part. Why? Because we're now able to solve. And for us to solve, we need to get this decimal for the square root of 53. All right, so what we're going to get is 7.28. So let's just call this 7.3, right? So now with that, this is what we're going to do. We go back, we set it up again. X is equal to negative 7 plus 7.3 over 2. That's the first one. And let's just do that real quick. So what we're going to have is 0 0.3 over 2, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see. Yep. Once we divide by 2. We're going to get X is equal to 0 0.15. So that's the first answer. Now, as I get some more space, we're going to switch to red and find the second answer. Okay. So we have X is equal to negative 7 minus 7.3 all over 2. And guys, I'm, I'm going to tell you, this last part you're going to do with just about every equation. Every single one, you're always going to have to do this step. So now we get X is equal to negative 14.3 over 2. Let's double check for accuracy, right? Yep, divided by 2, we get X is equal to negative 7.15, right? But before we go, guys, smash the like button if this video has been helpful for you. But before we go, I got one more 
question that we have to look at, and they're going to definitely throw this in an algebra one to trick you. Wrapping up this video, guys, and like I said, really hope you've enjoyed. This is the last trick that you have to understand because they will throw it out there on the EOC or some type of exam. So again, we're not in, we have to make sure we combine our like terms, equation set equal to zero. So after subtracting five, right, we should have four X squared minus six X plus five is equal to zero. Now I could properly set my quadratic formula up. So X is equal to the opposite, right? So six is now positive because it was negative plus or minus the square root of negative six squared minus four times four times five, right? And this is all over two times four. Let's double check the notes. Yep, that's correct. So now that we properly substitute, let's simplify. We have negative six plus or minus, and now we're gonna have 36 minus, let's see, four times five is 20 times four is 80. Yep, let's make sure this is correct. Yeah, all over eight. So now with this step, guys, we're gonna combine this and we're gonna have X is equal to negative six plus or minus the square root of negative 44. Let's double check that real quick, let's double check. Yeah, negative 44 all over eight. Now, you probably caught it already, but guys, remember, we cannot go any further with this problem in algebra one. Why? We cannot take the square root of a negative number. So right here at this point, we would stop trying to solve this uh, quadratic formula on a quiz, and we would understand that, hey, there are no real solutions to this quadratic formula. We would only have imaginary roots or numbers. So this is the last trick that I wanted to show you on how to, how and when to use the quadratic formula. Really hope this video was helpful for you. Comment down below if you have any questions or concerns on this video. Thank you guys so much for joining us today on Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.